Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That was uh, the, the sound of the mukuri uh, from Sekine Make. We'll hear a little bit about that later on. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, Japan House London's uh, latest online uh, event. This is the making of Ainu, Indigenous People of Japan. It's a panel discussion about the making of uh, a documentary uh, in Hokkaido. Uh, and this is held in connection with the Native Spirit Film Festival. And we are delighted to have the film's director with us and those who participated in the film and those who are from the, the place where the film, film was made. And for those of you who are watching, we have a few, a few house notes for you. Um, please note that your microphone and webcam will be disabled for the entire duration of the event. Please use the question and answer feature to type in your questions for uh, any of the speakers uh, today. We will have um, a session at the end of the discussion when people, where we, people can answer their questions. Uh, that will come through uh, the Japan House uh, moderators. And we hope to be able to answer as many questions as possible. Um, but please bear with us. We do usually get a lot and uh, we, will, we will try and our best as we can. Uh, also note that these, uh, event is being recorded uh, and is also streaming live on you later. Okay, thank you very much indeed. It's probably best now that I introduce who we have. I think today is extremely special. We have, we have participants uh, from New York. We have, I, I'm in London. We have uh, two participants from Niputani in, in Hokkaido and also from Fujisawa in Kanagawa Prefecture. So we are spanning a lot of time zones. Thank you very much indeed for everybody making time to be able to uh, fit in with uh, your daily routines for this. Thank you very much indeed. Let me introduce who we have today. So the director of, of the film is uh, Mizoguchi Naomi. She is an independent uh, filmmaker who moved to New York City in 2004 to study community me media. In 2008, she co-established a nonprofit organization called Cineminga, is that right? And in 2014, established Gara Films. She continues to create films with a broad view, such as shows for mainstream media, as well as in focus films about community issues. Naomi san, maybe you can, you can show us who you are by giving us a wave. Thank you very much. Okay, maybe we can, uh, we can, we can leave the, the, the map 
and and have go to full. Thank you. And we also have uh, Sekine Kenji, uh, who is, uh, hello, Kenji-san, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Kenji-san is the Ainu Japanese translator for the film. Uh, he was born in Hyogo Prefecture, um, but has lived in the Nibutani neighborhood in, in, in Hokkaido since 1998. After joining the local Ainu language class with his daughter in around 2005, Kenji continued his studies in earnest, learning from researchers and elders in, in residents in Nibutani and Biratoni. Today, Kenji leads the Ainu, the children's Ainu language classes offered by Biratori and also travels around Hokkaido teaching Ainu at schools and Ainu language at schools and in other institutions. Thank you very much, Kenji. And with Kenji, we have Sekine Maki. So Sekine Maki is an artisan. Hello, Makistan. And a Mukuri player, the Mukuri player for the film, in fact. And of course, you very much uh, introduced this session with your Mukuri playing earlier on. Thank you very much indeed. Maki grew up in Nibutani. Thank you. There's, that's the, that's the, the Mukuri. Maybe we can ask you to play a little bit later on. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, she was surrounded by the, the culture and crafts practiced by her grandparents' generation in Nibutani. She is fascinated by nature and she is an accomplished artisan producing wood carvings, atouche fiber textiles and embroidery using Ainu designs. Thank you very much, Maki. And last but not least, we have Sekine Maya, who is the daughter of Maki and Kenji. Hello, Maya, welcome. Maya has twice won the Ainu speech contest, which is held nationally. And in 2018, uh, she was one of STV's Ainu language teachers on their weekly radio show. In 2019, Maya started a YouTube channel to promote Ainu language. In addition to studying at Keio University in Tokyo, she speaks as a panelist at local and international conferences for Ainu study. Thank you very much, Maya, Maya for joining us. So Maya is joining us from, from Kanada, and Naomi is joining us from New York, and Kenji and Maki are joining us from Niputani in Hokkaido. Welcome, thank you so much. We're going to talk about the making of the film and a little bit about the life of Nibutani as well for, for people today. Just to let everybody know who is joining us, thank you very much indeed. Um, we are extremely privileged to be able to uh, allow all those who have joined this Zoom uh, after the session has finished, you will be given a link where you can access uh, the film online. Thank you very much to Naomi for the director and also to the Native Spirit Festival for allowing this to happen. Thank you very much indeed. So please wait and you will receive your link to see the film online at the end of this session. Thank you very much. Okay, maybe we shall start. Enough speaking from me. Naomi, uh, can I start with you, please, as the, the film's director? Um, maybe tell you, you could tell us a little bit about um, this film and, and how, you, how you came to make it. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I went to Biratori Town uh, 2008, that was my first time. Uh, because I wanted to learn about Ainu. I didn't know anything about it. Uh, so that was my intention. I didn't go to make a film. I just wanted to learn. And then I constantly, uh, probably once a year, sometimes once in two years, uh, revisited and then decided to make this film in 2004. Uh, from the conversation uh, of the curator at the uh, Nibutani Ainu Museum. Okay, thank you. And when you say you wanted to, to 
learn about Ainu, I think maybe we should try and understand what Ainu is actually, maybe. Um, maybe this is a question for, who would like to answer this question? What is Ainu? Maybe Kenji. Maki? I know Kenji-san, you, 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 from, from, from your biography, we just talked about teaching Ainu language, but for you, what, what is Ainu? Hi, Kenji-san. え、Hello, um, my name is um, Sugina Kenji, um, Iran Karate, hello um, in Ainu, and thanks for having me. Um, so just to explain, um, yes, Ainu is the indigenous people mainly residing in Hokkaido area, but um, it's not limited in Hokkaido actually. Um, there are many in the Sakhalin region in Russia and also some in the northern um, end of the Honshu Island, so Tohoku region. And nowadays, um, many are seen in the Kanto region as well. So um, they are the indigenous people of one of the indigenous people of Japan, but also like um, the language and the culture are different to the what is seen as mainland, mainstream Japanese culture. So that is Ainu, in essence. Thank you very much, Kenji. Thank you for answering that. Back to you, Naomi. So we're back to the story of your making the film. You went to Biratori, uh, to Niputani, I, I, yes, and you didn't intend to make the film. So what prompted you to, 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 to make this film? Um... That time, uh, in 2008, uh, I was working with indigenous people in Colombia. And then my colleague asked me, uh, you're from Japan, so there is a people called Ainu uh, who is indigenous, they know that. And then they asked me about it and I couldn't answer anything. So that's why I went there. And again, uh, in 2000. Oh, then this is a story. Uh, there is one person who is happened to be this person, Kazunobu-san. Uh, I met him when I observed uh, Ainu language class uh, in Nibutani. And then, you know, th that was my first time I just observed. And then I, in the end of the uh, class, I said, thank you so much. And then I was leaving and then this Kazunobu-san, came up to me say, oh, you're not familiar where I'm from, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Hyogo. And then uh, he asked me, do you want to learn more about Ainu? I said, yes. And then he says, then come back. And then, then I decided to be honest, you know, actually Kazunobu Sam, um, I didn't even know his name, but uh, I said, I live in New York and I'm not a rich person. So it's hard for me financially to come over to Hokkaido and rent a car and then stay at a hotel, uh, but I will come back, I promise you. And then he said, well, if you have an issue with money, you can stay in my home. This was only five minutes. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm shocked, but the um, month later, uh, there was a cultural festival, um, annual one in, uh, in Biratori. So I called him up because I wanted to go. And then, do you remember me? He said, yes. And uh, you told me I can stay in your house, is that true? Oh, yes, true, yeah. 
just come and then take this bus and then you don't have to rent the car and they use my car. Uh, so that was my <laughs> um, encounter. Uh, you know, it was lucky to have him. That's why I was able to go back again and again. Um, then uh, time passed in 2004, I was at the museum and then we had a chat with the curator and then he says, um, there are four seniors he wanted to capture, like he wanted to have their voice in record uh, before something happened. They're almost 80s. And I asked him, who are they? And happened to be these foreigners. And that time I knew everyone. Uh, they are all from the Iron language class and they stayed, I had a drink, uh, have dinner, lunch, something like that. So I thought, oh, I know everyone, so I should make a film. So that's the moment I decided to make a film. And, but collaborating with them. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I, was, I, I was going to ask exactly when you mentioned collaborating with, 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 with these people, uh, with, with the community. And I can see that it's thanks to, to one of the members of, of, of Kawa Nanosan, yes, I believe, isn't it? Who, 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 who befriended you very, very early on. How did you feel about making a film about people like this, or with people like this? Um, I, I, I guess it's quite a, uh, you have to be quite sensitive. You have to gain trust. You, for the right representation to, to be made. Uh, there are two things. Uh, one, is about the subjects like these poor elders, uh, seniors, because I knew them um, for almost six years, over the course of six years, uh, without the camera, um, I was able to talk very frankly or friendly and then um, they knew me. So when I told them, uh, actually, we, you know, with the um, Ibutani Ainu Culture Museum, we want to make a film about it. And then it's going to be, you know, uh, worldwide. Uh, you want to be on screen, things like that. And are you okay? And they all say, sure. I had no issue. And I intended to make my film by myself. I mean, the shooting stuff, you know, even collaborating with them, with the museum. Uh, I didn't hire any crew uh, members. Uh, there are two reasons. One, I had no money to hire. And the second reason was because if someone, when I'm interviewed, if someone they don't know uh, in the same room, they got nervous. They talk different way. Right, uh, so I didn't want that. I wanted to be as natural as possible. So that's why I um, um, chose to make this, uh, this film by, by myself. And the second thing is uh, collaboration, as you mentioned. Um, I th because I'm, I'm an outsider, I don't live there and I'm not Ainu. So I don't know so much about it, you know, even like, you know, study and learn a little bit, but it's not perfect. So I, I can't be, um, um, I shouldn't be a person who decide everything. So I wanted to have a museum or local people to be in the process. So from the beginning, I told them everything, you know, I'm planning and I asked them what they want to uh, capture. Like there are many other scenes I didn't use in the film, but uh, it's in the museum. Actually, I, um, from the beginning, I um, told museum, I can offer all of the raw footage and the uh, completed film so you can use, uh, even my die, whatever. So uh, that was, I think, two points. Uh, I was able to make this film. Thank you very much. I think I must I must say as well, I have a slight personal connection with this as well, in that 
I, I've never met you, Naomi, before in the flesh. I've never met Maya before, but I have had the chance to go to Nibutani. I have met Maki and, and Kenji. And I think you're, you're probably talking about, are you talking about Morioka-sensei in the, in the museum as well, yes? Um, Morioka-sensei came after, you know, I started a film. I mean, I knew him, but the, uh, that was the other curator. Okay. Uh, the reason I mention in him is because I met him as well in Nipotani and, and he mentioned your film as well. Oh, know? yeah, yeah. He, he helped us, me a lot. Yes, a lot. And, and, and um, I have seen the film and I think it is, I think it is very good indeed. Um, it, it mentions, as you said, four, four elders from, from the Piratori uh, area. And, and you've mentioned Kawanano-san as well already. I noticed that when Kawanano-san is interviewed for the first time, he starts to mention the word wajin as well. And that comes up several times. I, I would like to understand what the term wajin means. Uh, so I think that's the uh, best answer to that question is Kenji. Okay, Kenji again. Wajin,っていうのはですね、そうですね、あの本州とかえ日本え一般的に全国で知られてる言葉じゃないような気がしますね。で、え北海道で。本州からやってきた人、もともとはあの実際北海道とかそのあたりはですね、アイヌ民族があの住んでたんですね。で、そこに後からやってきたえいわゆる日本人のことを北海道ではワジンっていうような言い方をします。だからまあ僕もね、
Um, yes, I've known him since I was very small, actually. We were neighbours, in fact. So I do remember him um, from a very young age. And from a long time ago, um, he was very active in preservation of Ainu, um, Ainu people and its traditions as well. Um, so he has gathered people, but also, um, and he became the MP, um, as you mentioned, and um, one of the Diet members. And he was um, very active in teaching the um, teaching the old games um, to children and how to play, and also making films as well. So I thought he was amazing. Yes, um, he, he was an amazing person. Yes, yes, Maki, please. Uh, Maki san, dozo. えっと、あの、彼のさんが亡くなる前、あの、アイヌ語訳っていうので、マヤとケンさんと私が、あの、ペロンさんにアイヌ語を教えてもらったことがあるんですけれども、その時にあの、マヤにアイヌ語の名前
to me. And there are so many like her um, around Nibutani. And I grew up in that kind of environment. And I really see that as a privilege. And right now, I do, um, I try and I try in my own way um, for the Ainu preservation um, of the culture and the language using YouTubes and other um, platforms, social platforms as well, um, introducing daily phrases that are useful in Ainu language. And my father, um, Kenji, helped me as well. So, but I really feel like the reason why I'm involved in this way and interested is because I was raised in Nibutani and I'm very, very grateful for it. Thank you very much. I've, I've all, I mean, I've been lucky enough to attend one of your father's uh, Ainu language lessons. Um, I, I would like to ask maybe Kenji uh, about what is the importance of Ainu language? You have obviously had to learn it. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the status of, of Ainu language. あの、ここはですね、実際にえっと、喋れる人がほとんどいない、え、とても危機的な状況の言語だっていうんですよね、今の状況が。だから、え、僕はですね、でも、え、そういう危険語の中では、え、データはたくさん残っているし、あの、録
はいあアイヌ語は今はローマ字だったりとかカタカナで表記されることが主流なんですけどもともとはこうクレンで口でこう言葉で伝えられていた言語ですアイヌ語っていうのは Yes アイヌ language nowadays are described with romaji or katakana、um, scripts. Script. However, traditionally,、um, アイヌ language was really just a speech only. It was mostly just passed on through words. As an oral tradition, I see. Okay, thank you. Naomi san, yes. Yes, I'd like to add one thing.、Um, the, the video is a perfect tool. To preserve or learn、um, these uh, languages uh, that h a s no written、uh, character. So, what I did in South America or the other countries with indigenous people are the same. And some people are not, you know, don't like to read or write, but the you know, pronunciation and everything、uh, video. Uh, was the perfect tool as an ed- educational、um, equipment. So that was my intention、um, you know, to do something with indigenous people using video. Okay, thank you very much. Kenji, I remember from the lesson that you were giving the children that you used language flashcards using.、Uh, Latin script, I remember, and that、mm-hmm. surprised me. I thought I would see the Ainu language written in katakana only, but it was written in Latin script, and that surprised me a lot. So, thank you very much for that, for that question. We've had several people asking that. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we, we, more questions about language, actually. Seeing as we're on language, we might as well stay there, I suppose. Are there any similarities between Ainu? And Japanese, the two languages, are they similar? Are they very different? I don't know who would like to answer that question. Maya? Maybe, maybe my father is good to answer the question. Okay, Kenji, it's back to you. <laughs> We need to、um, be able to. Ah, Kenji, I'm mute. I'm not the most of the 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 えー、母音の数とかも一緒ですし、だから音も似てると。え、ただですね、ちょっとやっぱり違う音とかもあって、日本人には発音しにくい、え、音とかもありますね。でも、え、根本的にですね、これは全然違う言語なんですね。ま、
when I first met you, actually, you were you were you were, you were busy with uh, some some clothes, and you told me about your husband's uh, language class uh, that evening, <laughs> and so it was the chance meeting you that I was able to meet your husband, and and we were able to to look at uh, Japa. Uh, I knew language and 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 the teachings of the children there, but what 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 do you do um, in in Niputani um, generally? We, we you mentioned in your bio that you have some you work with textiles, uh, you work with wood as well. Ah, おばあちゃんだったり、あ、おばあちゃんは織物をやったり刺繍をしたりっていうことをしていて、で、まあ、おじいちゃんも彫刻をしたりとか、で、お父さんも彫刻をしてっていう、みんなの代々と工芸をや
みんな仲間、みんな友達みたいな感じで生活してる気がします。Um, yes, being a Inu,、um, I actually just simply interpret that as being human, really. Because that's,、um, I've, been, I've been fortunate in encountering so many people of different,、um, from different regions, different ethnicities, different nationalities. But growing up in Nibutani, I've always been taught that. Ainu means people or human. So I just really thought that, okay, so Ainu is people. And so I really realized recently that I don't really categorize people according to their ethnicities or where they're from, really.、Um, they're just people to me. So I am in Kanto region at the moment, but I don't really feel lonely at all because everyone around me are part of my family, part of the community. So everyone's part of us, really. We're just. One of us. Thank you very much. It's a very positive and, and optimistic answer. I like it very much indeed. Of course, the word Ainu simply means human, yes, in, 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 in Ainu language. Thank you very much indeed. We have lots of questions from people watching. If you're okay, maybe we can start to, 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 to have some of those questions from, from the people、um, who are watching. Thank you so much for all your questions. This is a question to Naomi, in fact.、Um, this is from Cynthia Calzolari. Thanks for this. I can't wait to go to Hokkaido. I was awarded by the Japan Foundation a fellowship to go there for my research in Ainu arts.、So、this is the question to Naomi. Would you call the film a documentary? Yes. That was a very simple answer. Thank you very much indeed.、Um, we need another question now. Let's have a look.、Um, okay, so this is、uh, from one of our, our viewers. How. What is the current social status of Ainu people? When I was small, more than 30 years ago, I lived in Abashiri in Hokkaido. But at that time, there was no communication or integration between Wajin and Ainu people. We rarely saw them. Ainu people are only standing at tourist spots for photographs. I wonder what the current situation is.、Um, hopefully, people are more engaging with each other. Who would like to answer this question? Yes, I'm going to answer this question. About 30 years ago, 僕らべたら、えー、すごいいい状況にはなってると思います。あのパレスとかもね、えー、少なくなってるんだと思います。で、えー、まず、えー、初めからしてですね、圧倒的にアイヌは少ないんですよね。えー、少数でもあると、先住民族だって少数でもある。えー、と、まあ北海道でだいたい 0.3% ぐらいかなって言われてるんですね、人口の中の。で、えー、我々が住んでいるニブタニっていうのは300人ぐらいの町で、えー、その 75% ぐらいはアイヌって言われてますけど、それは、えー、最大のコミュニティなんですよね、えー。アイヌの割合が最大のコミュニティであって、えー、それ以外のところでしたらね、圧倒的に少ないと。だから、えー、と、ニブタニで育っている人は基本的に小さい頃はね、あの、差別とか感じることがないですし、でも、えー、逆にですね、大きな町とかに行ったらアイヌは少数であるから、えー、今でも、えー、差別があったりとか、何かの形でいじめがあったりとか、そういうのはね、あるようです。ただ、えー、最近ですね、国立の博物館、アイヌに、えー、関する博物館ができたりとか、そういうので注目はとてもされてるんですよね。で、えー、たくさんの人がですね、えー、例えば昔からある先,先住民族の権利としての、えー、鮭を、えー、川で取る権利を訴えていたり、あと、やっぱりあの遺骨問題って言ってですね、えー、大学とかに、えー、まあ、研究調査の目的で持っていかれた、墓から、えー、持っていかれた骨とかそういうのがたくさんあったりして、それを
その変化を求めている人たちもたくさんいるし、えー、やっとですね、えー、アイヌの権利についてとかも、えー、みんながこう考え出しているというそういう状況だと言いますねその中で、まあ、アイヌ語だってやっぱり言語圏ですよね喋る、えー、喋れる状況がずっとなくてそれは、えー、喋れるようになればなる方がいいんじゃないかというような形で、えー、どんどんどんどん、まあ、活発になっているのは、えー感じますというような状況ですね。Yes,、um, I will answer the question.、Um, as you have pointed out, maybe around 30 years ago still,、um, there would have been more prejudice,、um, I, I believe. Just, just up front,、um, I would like to explain that there are、um, just large number of differences between Japanese and、um, Ainu people in terms of numbers,、um, because Ainu are the minority group, really.、Um, it's the indigenous group. And like an overall, even within Hokkaido,、um, Ainu people only account for 0.3% of the entire population of Hokkaido. And whereas in Nibutani, it's a small town, it only has 300 people as a population, but 75% are of Ainu origin. So I would say that. Those children who grew up in Nibutani wouldn't experience prejudice, so much prejudice necessarily. However, those from the larger cities,、um, even within Hokkaido, maybe、um, would have experienced some kind of prejudice or bullying growing up.、Um, however, there are, however, the current reality is that National Museum has opened up focusing on Ainu, and so there are more focus and attention paid. To its people and culture. And, but there are things such as the regarding indigenous people's rights, and Ainu people are claiming、uh, the rights to take a fish salmon out、um, wild salmon in the river, and also p r o b l e m with the graveyards as well.、Um, some researchers have dug up graves to take up、um, what is left in there、um, in, in the name of research. So Ainu people are requesting those to be returned. So there are those、um, disputes. That are still ongoing.、Um, however, going back to the language, I think it is really to,、um, it's extremely important to expand the regions of the language being spoken as well. So、um, there are, that's, that's really what I'm trying to do. And like those are the current reality, really. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, we've had some comments here about some people are asking about the status of Japanese、uh, and, and Ainu language. I mean, just to say,、um, maybe, and correct me if I'm wrong,、uh, Ainu language is, is, nobody is born speaking now Ainu language. Is that, is that correct? ね、そういう状況だと思いますね。えー、まあ、大雑把に言ってですね、えっと、この地方でも明治生まれとかそういう人は、え、流暢に喋れる人います。でも明治っていうのは100年以上前ですから、実際はそうですね。みんながあの
アイヌ語を使ってくれてそれに私が答えたりとか意識的にアイヌ語で話しかけるとかはすることあるんですけどでもなんだろう日常会話を誰かとアイヌ語でっていうのは関東とかではあまりないです。So, I make YouTube videos with my university friends as well. So,、um, when amongst those friends,、um, they might say, Kuenna in a place of sorry,、um, so in Ainu. And they might ask me,、um, Do you want to go to co op in Ainu as well? But、um, when I or they do that, it's quite intentional and it's, they tend to be in phrases as well. So, I don't really tend to have full on daily conversations in Ainu in the Kanto region so much. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. That was my,、uh, my, my, my rather selfish question to understand a little bit more, but thank you very much. I hope it's answered some other people's.、Um, this is a question for Naomi again. Naomi、um, would like to, this is、uh, from one of our, our viewers. I would like to ask what were the hardships you experienced or faced during the filming process? How did you overcome these hardships? Uh, most hard part was the financial、uh, situation. I have to fly from New York to Hokkaido like three times a year. I have to pay rent here in New York. So I sublet to other people while I'm, he- I'm not here.、Um, the plus, I'm a、um, one person crew, so I have to carry tripod and everything. So, and then I have to think about things.、Uh, so I made a Lots of mistakes <laughs> technically. There was no audio here. I get disappointed, things like that. That was the you know, two things that were the hardest. Okay, thank you very much. Just to say to everybody, we will send、um, a link、uh, through in the chat to everybody on this to、uh, Maya's、uh, YouTube channel. So people can, can, can access and, 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 see, and see Maya in, in, in action. Um, maybe this is a, a question. We haven't got much time left, but this is for Mackie, I think. Mackie.、Um, Rebecca has said, love this talk so far. Thank you very much indeed.、Um, she would like to ask, what makes Ainu weaving special?、Um, is it the designs? Is it the techniques? And where can we see examples? I've seen some embroidery. Uh, in Sapporo, but never weaving. えと私のお母さん、私の母があの煮ぶた煮で織物をやってるんですけれども、あの織物っていうのは木の皮なんですよね。で、お表っていう木をあの春に皮を剥いで、木の皮を剥いで、その内皮を使って、でそれをあの。処理して一枚ずつ剥がして糸を裂いてで地綿って折るんですよね。でそれがあの木の皮の着物としてアイヌ民族は昔からあの着ていました。木綿が手に入る前はその樹皮木の皮の着物を着て暮らしていてでそれをあの今も伝統受け継いでやっていて煮蓋にアップシっていうものであの私たちの地域では。私の母のゆきこと、あと藤谷さんっていう方だったり、あの何人かおってる人がいます。で、煮豚に来ないと、多分織物っていうのは拝見できないのが現状かと思います。あとはそうですね。えっ、ー、と。ゆきこと、あ、えっと煮豚の人たちはもう50年とかおったりとかしている人たちなんですけれども。あの最近練習している人たちだったりそういう人たちはウポポイの方とかでもそういうのを見れたりとかもするかと思います。はい。Um, yes, as I mentioned, my mother weaves、um, and it's they、um, weaving in Ainu weaving is made with the skin、um, of the tree actually. So we take those skin,、um, skin of the tree off. In the springtime,、um, from the tree called Ohori,、um, which is the,、um, native to Hokkaido. And they,、um, so they have been dried and they, have been pro- they, they get processed. And it's,、uh, so they get ready to be weaved. And it, it's been made into a sheet,、um, which, was, um, which gets made into clothing. 
And before cotton was widely available, um, I knew people would use that as their daily clothing. So um, they were worn. And they are still um, available in Nibutani region. Um, there is a group called the Nibutani Apshi, um, which my mother is involved. Um, so her name is Yukiko, and there is another lady called Fujiya, um, and a few others as well, a few of the main other members who keep this tradition going. But if you're interested, I'm afraid you might need to come to Nibutani to see uh, these examples. However, um, there are some younger people who are, um, and this Nibutani one has been going on for more than 40, 50 years, but newer generations have started to take up weaving again, and those examples might be available in places like Upopoi as well. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, Upopoi being the, the, the new museum, which has been uh, only created this year in, in Shiraoi, in, 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 in Hokkaido, not so far from Biratori, not so far from, from, from where you are in Nibutani. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for, I'm afraid, today. It's gone so quickly. Um, thank you so much to, to everybody uh, here. But first of all, I, I do have to say thank you very much to the Native um, Spirit Festival, and especially to Tweed, who has made this possible. Um, the the, the Native Spirit Festival um, link will be will be sent to, to, to everybody who's attending this as well. So you will have a link in the chat as well. Thank you very much indeed for that. But thank you, of course, to Naomi, of course, who, who, who's made this possible by creating this film. I think it is an extraordinarily good introduction. And more than that, in, in what it says, the, the warmth of your relationship, I think, comes out uh in in the film obviously um you can tell that it that it's 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 been made together and 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 it's a it's a wonderful thing to see everybody who's taken part uh by watching this uh has the opportunity thank you very much nami thank you very much uh, native spirit festival for viewing this to view this film so the link will be sent to you thank you very much indeed please do see the film i think the film only has a short amount of time for you to see it uh only a few hours uh, well a, a day or two so that will be in 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 the it's 24 hours i think so uh, please do watch the film uh within that time um thank you very much maki and kenji Thank you very much indeed. It's been it's been wonderful to have you join us uh, from Nibutani, and thank you very much, Maya, uh, for joining us from the Tokyo region from Fujisa. Thank you so much. Um, I hope everybody will look at your YouTube channel. I think for everybody's sake, I hope everybody will start to learn a little bit of Ainu language as well. That would be that would be fun. I think I'm, I'm certainly interested. Before we disappear, um, I would like to say from Japan House's point of view um, that we have got uh, our exhibition at Japan House at the moment, which is called Architecture for Dogs. That has opened um, and it runs until the 10th of January. If you'd like to see that, you have to book, so please do book online. We also have um, an interactive display because it's about dogs. We have uh, some of the pieces where dogs can actually interact with this, uh, with some of the pieces in the hall in Japan House. At the moment, um, things are changing, as you may know. Um, in London, things are, are 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 changing quite rapidly at the moment. We do have planned for the Saturday, the twenty fourth of October, a chance to 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 meet. Uh, a few Japanese dog breeds. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, please watch the website for details in case we have to change any of those plans. And we also have the Architecture for Dogs Roadshow, which will go to various venues in London. Uh, please see our website for dates. The first one is the 25th of October at the uh, Horniman Museum uh, and Gardens in South London. Uh, It'll be outside. Uh, please see our website and there's the website for details. Thank you very much 
indeed. That's, uh, oh, one more talk, uh, Thursday the 29th of October. This will be online, so this will be happening definitely. It's uh, Dig Dogs, the Archaeology of Dogs in Japan by Professor Simon Kena uh, of the Sainsbury Institute and the University of East Anglia. I am sure this will be an extraordinarily entertaining event. Uh, please do uh, tune in for that. Thank you very much uh, to everybody for attending the event. The feedback form will be sent back to you, who, who those of you who have viewed. In that feedback form will be the link to watch Ainu, Indigenous People of Japan. Uh, you will receive that afterwards. Many thanks to everybody who has taken part. Many, many thanks. I, I look forward to, to, to seeing you again soon, I hope. Uh, it's not too long that um, we're able to meet again. Thank you very much, Maki and Kenji, Naomi and Maya. Thank you. Look after yourselves, stay safe. I hope everybody, uh, yes, is manages to, to, to keep themselves away from harm. Take care. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.